Hey guys, thanks for tuning into this week's episode of the Faulty Logics Podcast. This is Dan. It's Billy. Wayne. And this week, we're going to talk about Japan's population crisis. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, Billy's trip to the his hometown in China land. And uh, we're also going to talk about in a science and tech talk. <laughs> science minute. It's the future. The, uh, what was it? The We're going to talk about the hibernation of humans, like okay. bears. Okay, guys, so Japan right now is actually facing a pretty big problem. We all know that they're they're one of the high, um, the, I guess, the lowest population growth in the entire world. So it's predicted that currently... It's not even Japan, a growth. It's a, yeah, it's, it's always going down. going down. Yeah, so currently right now, Japan's population is 120 million, or 100, 127 million. And by 2060, their population is estimated to be at 87 million, which is, damn, that's quite a lot lower than right, what it is right now. I don't have any issues with that because uh, we already have a population crisis in the world. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are starving and we don't need more people. Yeah, because, you know, Japan is one of those one countries that's very densely populated. That's true. So, you know, if, they, if a couple people die here and there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that's a wrong thing to say about <laughs> it's, it's the not Japanese so much, people. <laughs> it's not so much that a couple of people are dying here and there. They're just not reproducing. Yeah, that's true. You think, like, it's the issue that they're... Because um, a lot of people try to like figure out why it's happening um but do you think it's because of their culture they're like you know how they have too many weird otakus kinky, yeah kinky stuff weird stuff like that i think so for sure okay so what uh, i've i've seen f- several documentaries mm-hmm. one of the big issue is because their culture it's um they want to work right work right, oriented right. women's working there too now. capitalist sure but is you know what they're so focused on working the life is literally yeah, revolved around that's all they're life. doing. You know what? And by the time they realize they need to start a family, a lot of times it's too late and they don't know what to do. And the thing is, with uh, Japanese technology, it's not helping the situation. Apparently, uh, even the men, they because all the shit that's available to them, like... Oh, ro- the, the Android sex doll yeah. things? Oh, man. Because you know what? There was one interview. This guy had uh, one the, either the robot sex doll... Or the, uh, ne- I think it was a Nintendo DS girlfriend. Oh, man. Right? Yeah, there's some weird yeah. stuff where people marry, like, like anime characters or something, yeah. right? Would you, have you ever been curious about it? No. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Wait, whoa, whoa, yeah, suspicious but, there. Because, you know what, if these options are available to them, why are they going to go through the heartache of asking a girl out and get dumb? Because mm. a lot of men's uh, facing that dilemma in Japan. <laughs> Just right? rather go get an anime girlfriend. And yeah, not because, you know what? Why go through the trouble when, you know, they have this? But at this point, like, is it likely that they're going to be getting dumped? Because this also means that the girls are, like, they're lacking boyfriends as well, too. So they're probably going to get desperate. Yeah, so the article I think I found was about friends getting married. So they don't want to date. So they're just friends just saying, you and me, marriage right now. Like, this is actually, like, it seems like an interesting concept. But I feel like, at least from us, uh, as Asian families, or we come from Asian background, that's kind of how our parents were like, too, because they didn't have the technology or the means to meet other people outside of their neighborhoods and villages. They just so, walk next door be like, yo, right? Yeah, they just, <laughs> how you doing? Everyone ends up, like, dating and marrying each other within and bring their it over, village. And that's it. <laughs> Like, I'll, I'll give you a goat or something, right? Yeah. I, I wonder, like, if the whole country as a whole just has low libido, you think? I don't no. think so. Japan? Are you crazy? I think they're super horny. It's just, like, they're so awkward. Because, yeah, that's... Yeah, uh, yeah that's what it seems like now. That's the weird thing is that when I was in Japan, everyone was so proper. Like, when you're in the subway, um, there's compartments for females, right? Everyone is very upright, sitting... Oh, the safe ones. Yeah, they have to be upright because they get jammed into the the train car. Do you have the experience where they just no? I, push I, you in? I avoided the rush hour stuff, so but it's I so didn't fun. Have to, oh god, I don't want to experience that. But I wonder. It, that's very weird though, because in high school, right? Like you know how like always about like trying to date people, whatever gender you're interested sure, in. Sure. <laughs> but there it was it like all everyone's isolated and you're all in your uniforms and just like whatever. Well, the thing, the thing with Japanese schooling. Japanese schooling is very similar to their work as well, too, because they have like a robotic? super like crammed schedule for school. As soon as they're done school, they have like uh, Tutors? after school like classes. Oh yeah, as that's well, like too. that in China too. Then yeah. right, they, so, they go from school to like after school stuff. Exactly. So they don't have free time to date and stuff like that. It's very packed their schedule. And then once they get into their working world, it's the same thing. They go to work. Uh, once they're done work, they have to go out and go to the bars and like socialize with their coworkers and drink and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So they don't have time to do anything. That's so weird. When I was like in Korea, right? 
mm-hmm. thought Korea's population was like South Korea's population was increasing, right? Because there's so many people there uh, that are doing plastic surgery, <laughs> guys and girls, right? Yeah. That I thought like that would make their entire country as a whole super horny ass people, but their population is decreasing too. And I'm like, what? What the shit is going on? Did they? Was there any research stating why Korea was like that? Or? I didn't. I didn't look into Korea, but like, isn't that like weird that you have a population of people who are amazing looking because they're all doing other? It's because they don't want to have ugly kids. <laughs> like that. Like that. Yeah. No, but... <laughs> no, it's like because you know what? they know they ha- they were ugly at one point. Yeah. Or no, but then their kids just get plastic surgery and problem solved, right? That's a lot of money. No, plastic surgery there is super cheap. But the thing is, they don't get plastic surgery until they graduate. Yeah. Because it's that's a uh, apparently that's a yeah that's yeah, a gift from present. the dad yeah right but he's like <laughs> you want du- you want double eyelids graduate first and we'll talk your about dad it. dad tells you you're ugly and gives you <laughs> a gift to graduation. But the other thing too is like I I don't know if this makes a difference in Korea, but I know that Koreans are very um, prideful and they're very well they they don't like they're very I don't know how to put this, but everything they do has to be like pro Korea. You know, so they're not the type of people. That they're very are, nationalist then. Yes, about their country. Or patriotic about yeah. their culture. So. Whereas Japanese people, you could, you'll see like inter, uh, inter, inter, what do you call it? Intersex? Inter, interracial? <laughs> interracial. <laughs> intersex. Interracial couples. Yeah. Like, uh, so it's, it's not uncommon, mm-hmm. but with, I think with Korean people, they want to stick with Korean people only. So that also minimizes their options. Yeah. So, but the, the strange thing is, so both Korea and, uh, Japan, they have this very like formalized, uh, structure system. Yes. In terms of respecting elders. I wonder if, because we don't have any of that here in North America, right? And we don't give a shit about that in China. Cause you speak like, for yourself, Billy. I swear to God, I respect the elders. Yeah, but you don't <laughs> have to like, there's no like formal way of addressing them and all that stuff. You just call them your grandparents or something, right? Cause, yeah, yeah. Because in, in Japanese words, you have to add stuff at the end of things based on how comfortable or, or who they are in respect to you, right? Yeah. So I'm wondering if that, all of that adds to the whole culture of things where everyone's so isolated and has to be proper, right? I don't think that would. Yeah, I don't I don't think that plays a direct effect in like their ability to reproduce and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I really think it's just cuz their their lives are so busy and uh and that they're otakus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so people don't know what otakus are. I don't know what that means. Explain to them what otakus are. They're like anime nerd hermits. Like they're just so obsessed that they they like idolize their hentai. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh. Ooh. There's an article recently of the guy who died in his apartment, and his apartment had like six tons of... Oh, yes, yes. And he bought it for his son, too, or something like that? What? He has a son. He actually has a son. What? And his son has a... He bought his son a a sex doll as well. Oh, man. Okay, I... Man, otaku... How is there any room for sex dolls in that six ton, like, worth of magazines? I think that might be a different story. I think what you're talking about is different, because he's in love with his sex dolls or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of those. He has like six or seven of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's totally different. That's totally different. Then he doesn't love them. He... (laughs) If he has six of them, one for each day. There's seven days in a week. Yeah, Sundays. Just yeah, Sundays. For a Jesus long day. Time. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it on Jesus Day. Yeah. Um. So having like like someone like that, the otaku guy with like six tons of freaking porn and all oh, whatever. That guy. Yeah. Okay. It was all hentai or is it Japanese porn? I don't. I don't know what it was. I didn't want to. I didn't want to find out. This was, this I'm was glad, all leaked, right? I'm glad the the image was blurry. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Because you know what the fucked up thing about hentai is. Is that it's like it like sexualizes children? Really? That's the weird part. Well, yeah. I don't know. I never watched it. Yeah, it's it's really weird because like it goes f- way too far one way, and it also sexualizes like like Bestiality, humongous. Because yeah. the only thing I know about it stuff. is normally it involves a girl and tentacles, and that's it. Oh, fun fact about the tentacle thing. What the hell? The reason why tentacles became a thing was because censorship in Japan was so huge back then. Yeah. So yeah. the way they got around that was using tentacles as instead of thing. Instead of a penis. Exactly. So it's kind of like their gang bang. Instead of having eight guys just getting octopus going eight different ways. No, yeah, the point like was the to, yeah, to get, get through the censorship, right? So then yeah. eventually it became like a fetish thing. That, well, they still had to censor the vagina. Yeah. Yeah. But at least that's one less thing they could censor. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, I think that's what it is. Like, it's super weird. Um, even even like I think Japanese porn. Yeah. They're uh, like Billy said. They they do fantasize about like gigantic boobs and stuff like that was as well. Oh yeah. But then there's also the genre of like girls that look like they're twelve and stuff like that. So I think it's and super Japanese weird. girls actually don't look like that at all. No, they like, don't. Which is the bad thing. Yeah. I guess the the contrast between how they look in the animes and what they are fantasized to be versus how they look in reality 
which is like just a regular like plain Asian girl, right? That's how on average they look, right? There's too many schoolgirl fetishes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you notice the issue is the Japanese culture, no, not culture, but the community or the business people, they're not helping at all too because they're putting up services that pretty much cater to those people that's not having sex. Like a cuddle business for God's sake, right? No, that exists in New York too though. What the fuck? The cuddling business. It's and a woman in New York. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, they have love hotels though. Yeah, I was just about to say, no, but that should promote it, right? Yeah, they should. But then normally the love hotels are for uh, like busy businessmen to, you know, do with like schoolgirls. Yeah. Right? I guess. Or else they can do it at home. I thought they just cosplay as schoolgirls. I don't know if they actually were schoolgirls. No, no, because no, I've saw another documentary. A lot of these girls, they do, um, you know, do business with these businessmen. So they can have money to buy like their fancy, daddies. yeah, pre- pre- pretty much a sugar day. So he, she can buy all her nice stuff, like like LV bags or whatnot, right? It's a lucrative business. Yeah, like comparing that to the population of Canada, because you know how our population doesn't grow that much too, because we're also a first world country and we kind of are comfortable with everything. Mm-hmm. Most yeah. people here would choose to have one or two kids max, right? Which so, is the perfect number. <laughs> yeah, so they don't actually overproduce the amount of children that they. Like, you know, took in. But Our population increases due to immigration. Yeah. Yeah. And in poorer places, they usually, like, go crazy because, honestly, having been to China recently, there's nothing else to do other than have children. So when no, you're... No, but I think... But that's not the purpose of having several children in China, though. Because um, I think uh, infant mortality rate is really high. That's why they have more children. No, well, but they, they have... They're like, what else is... Like, literally, there's nothing else to do but to raise children in China. Well, not literally, but but there is <laughs> raise children from the dead. There's nothing to do there, right? And when you're on, when you're not like challenged, like intellectually, when you're not like busy doing stuff, and you're sitting there, you're watching TV. Your friends have kids. You're gonna have kids. Your friends have another kid. You're gonna have two more kids. You know, just it's just a social thing that just happens, right? Mm-hmm. But as people get busier, like like in Japan, like people are probably like you're right. I think they're so busy to a point where. Thinking about children is not as important as where your career goes or fulfilling your duty in society or something, right? Because that's what I feel like is here, right? We we want to produce the least amount of children because children are somewhat annoying but are very rewarding, <laughs> right? But they are somewhat annoying, right? Because if, if they're not annoying and they're easy to raise and everything is perfect, then we would have more children. But they do come with a side effect. And I think most of us understand that side effect so we only try to go with a good number, which is two. So you just need to stop surrounding yourself with annoying kids. Oh, I think that's your issue. No. I think you just having to go around annoying kids. <laughs> no, no, no. Every, every kid is like a significant amount of investment, right? And I think we are too selfish as individuals to invest more <laughs> into having more kids. And I think the the work life in um, Japan is so stressful too. Like, isn't yeah. it? Like, there's a huge suicide rate too, right? In Japan? Because of failing grades. I, I thought even from work too. Oh, yeah. I don't know. No, back to what you were saying, though, Billy. Over here, it's not that people don't want to invest more in kids. It's just that they can't. It's just so goddamn expensive to raise kids nowadays. Yeah, well, that's the whole part of it, right? That kids are an uh, expense, right? Kids are a thing. That's why you don't want to have more, right? That's what I'm saying is, like, in poor countries, like, it's not that expensive, right? In in rural areas, yeah. you can have as many kids as you want. It doesn't matter, right? But in countries like Japan and Canada, you can't do that, right? Because you, the more kids you have, the more time you have to work to counteract oh, yes. the kids right it doesn't work it doesn't work that way that's why we know it's an investment of our lives yeah. to have more kids especially <laughs> like in the past um where you had like a stay-at-home wife or whatever like that yeah a uh, housewife and you can survive with having just one person going to work full-time mm-hmm. and now it's extremely difficult to do that you need both parents working full-time yeah, exactly. you can't which is which have is... somebody taking that mat leave or whatever yeah so the culture shift is so different because when you're when you are in those poor places both parents don't have to work and you can still survive some somehow through magic right <laughs> through fake eggs <laughs> yeah but somehow here both parents work their ass off to get a tiny little place yeah to raise one kid and you struggle your ass even more to get an even smaller like space to add on to that to raise a second kid yeah yeah that's probably why <laughs> that is all all right so moving on to China stuff. I recently traveled back to uh, the motherland, right? In Fujian. <laughs> did you bring me my tea, Billy? Did you ask for tea? I did. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> you fucking bastard. <laughs> I totally forgot. I saw a lot of tea there. That's why I asked you for tea. 
<laughs> okay, I totally forgot about tea. Okay, so I just want to quickly go over, I guess, uh, if anyone's actually interested in traveling there. No one's interested in which traveling I China. would highly recommend you don't travel to Fujian. Um, quick geography, it's in the middle of China. It's near the, like, China looks like a belt, uh, chicken, right? Okay. That's like the laziest way to like describe a place in China, right in the middle. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain. Okay, China it looks like a chicken. It's as opposed to it's a, a chicken. It's a chicken breast. Okay. Right. <laughs> Which way is it facing? It doesn't matter. <laughs> so just smack in the middle. No, it's the chicken breast in the front. In the front breast. Yeah. So which way is the chicken facing? So we know if it's east or west. To the east. Oh my god. Well, you know what? <laughs> just forget it. You're right. worse than me. All right. Fine. Whatever. Okay. So just quick tip of traveling there. If you're going to travel there, you you have to at the minimum no Mandarin. Because people there speak, uh, it depends on how far you go it's in. Like different dialects, right? Yeah. Billy, you know what's a life hack for that? Bring someone that knows Mandarin. Yeah, or that. That's why like, even the or... person that knows Mandarin is going to like. It's going to be hard because oh, yeah, it is. if you go in the rural areas, they speak Fujian, right? But yeah. not everyone speaks the same kind. Yeah. Some people speak different kind no, of Fujian. But if you're lucky, they'll know Mandarin. If you're lucky. Yeah. Almost everyone knows Mandarin, so that's the good thing. And in the main main cities, like traveling around is okay. It's very okay if you know Mandarin because um, the buses are. You know, they lay out like what, what the different places are going to be. There is a app that you can use in China that you can use for their bus and traveling around. I don't have that app because Google Maps is not allowed there. So I had no idea what the hell the app was, but I saw people using it. Um, so there is an app you can download. Um, traveling by car is very easy too. Cars are very cheap there. So the bus costed a uh, dollar or two, like Chinese dollars to travel, which is like Wait, nothing. When you say car is cheap, are you saying renting or buying a car? Renting. Okay, like, okay. I mean, like asking for a ride, like ca- taxis. Oh, okay, 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 makes sense. Okay, go. Yeah, so it's cheaper than Uber. Yeah, so a bus, a bus ride is like twenty five cents to us here, basically, right? Twenty five to fifty cents for us. Okay, and you can like literally go from the main city all the way to the ghettos and to the villages with one Good bus. Tip, really good tip. How to get to the ghettos? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and with a with a car, a car costs like like fifty bucks for the day, eighty bucks for the day sometimes yeah. to go from one place to another. Like we were in a car for like two hours and the guy drove us from the village area to the main city 80 bucks chinese dollars you know what i had when i went to guaylin yeah. so i had a taxi driver that just stayed with me the whole day yeah we, we had that too yeah. so that and we just 400 yeah we made no he he agreed to 200 yeah but he kept the timer running it went over we actually wanted to give him that money he, he wouldn't accept it wow he just like this is the yeah. minimum i want and that's it yeah wow what a good guy he was <laughs> Yeah, so eighty bucks for uh, a trip, mm-hmm. and then four hundred for uh, a day thing. So we we were in a car for for traveling from one side of the country to the other, three hour drive, four hundred bucks for I would say like nine people in a car because we had the big nine like, people in the car. Yeah, we had the big big cars, right? Okay, like so, the cargo vans. Yes, yeah. Like- yeah. So traveling around is very very good, very cheap. Food wise is also very cheap. If you go to the uh, kind of those smaller restaurants, like not like the big brand name ones, like we fed eight people for a hundred dollars. Like Canadian, like eight people, like that was like ridiculous. But things like McDonald's, Starbucks, all those things are all the same price. Right. Yeah. It's just it's ridiculous. Was the food real? Yeah, it was pretty real. You know what? The McDonald's I liked better than the McDonald's here. The Fujianese McDonald's? Yeah, the Chinese McDonald's. Wait, you're saying like Burger King? I mean Big Mac to Big Mac or their own burger? Their like own burger to ours because they they had like this. Uh, no, 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 because they have spicy chicken here too, right? I don't think so. No, I don't know. Go on. So their chicken there had like strands and fibers, so it tasted real and it was actually better. Are you sure it was? Oh, real? you mean? Oh, you mean? <laughs> so it's, it's an actual chicken breast. Yeah, chicken breast, or chicken meat, or tater. The texture. Yeah, they had that here too. It just it wasn't spicy. Yeah, it just it just better. That's why I felt. Oh, so shopping there, uh, shopping there is uh, really really cheap. Like you know, because you expect it because everything's in China. It's so, like. Yeah. So I bought a. So just reference, I bought a jacket there, a wool jacket for twenty bucks Canadian. That's right? too much. But here, it would have costed, I would say, 150 at like one of those regular places, right? Like an overcoat type of thing? Yeah. 20 like a full like length coat. So it was 20 bucks. I was like, what the shit? And then I just bought it. <laughs> but the only they bargain? Yeah, I think because I bought a lot of stuff. So they gave me like a couple hundred off after I bought everything. Well, I didn't bargain. My aunt bargained. Because the rule of thumb back when I went to Beijing a long time ago, if they say 100, you say 10. The fuck? Yeah. Shit, and, and you get 90 And you probably off. get it for 15 or 20. I don't know, whatever. I let my I let my aunt bargain. She was the bargaining person. So yeah, so shopping around is pretty good. Like there are there are those big super malls, right? Like big plaza ones, which are I would say even like regular price compared to here. And I don't even know if the quality is any better too, because it looked like they just grabbed it from those other stores and just put in a fancier display, right? So I would strictly try to stay to those smaller places because I feel the quality is the same, right? 
So aside from that, like I want to kind of go over like one of the days I was there. So I was there for two weeks and like we got the guy in the car. We drove around. We went to the countryside where we were traveling around the mountains and everything. The mountainside, it was very like kind of, it, it was nostalgic and strange because nostalgic was strange because I had never been there before. So <laughs> Wait, how's that nostalgic then? I don't know because I have like flashes of my mind, maybe from watching Chinese you shows or something. like... This is your home. You yeah, know? it's really, it had so a weird that, feel. How young were you when you uh, came to uh, Canada? I came here when I was five, but I went back when I was 10. For how long? For like three months or something crazy. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, so I still have like, like, because I was trying to piece together where I was from and all the places, yeah. and I have no idea where <laughs> anything was anymore. So the province I was from is very, it's kind of like European esque like you know the the picture of greece where it's square buildings stacked one on top of another yeah and then it's like ocean at the back and mountain at the, and behind it right that's exactly how every single one of those places look like almost oh, all of them are like hyper colorful some of them are like bright blue bright orange and it's just all of these buildings like just laid out and then there's always a dock and because fishing is like a huge like industry there because uh, we're right next to the water so there's there's that kind of like style of things do which, you think they intentionally try to do it that way to mimic those greece or italy like it's almost like sicily yeah yeah basically right uh do, they, do you think they intentionally try to copy that because i know there are some places in china who they, they intentionally copied certain cities as well too uh, like the way you're cities. describing it to me it feels like a brazil situation where they just paint bright colors so yeah it doesn't look so bad that that's more what i think it is like so it's because, like the slums uh, yeah the, the reason why i think it it looks like that is just based on the geography that things happen because they built it on hills and mountains okay so it just ended up being that way right and then other ones that I saw was the Shire where all the hobbits lived <laughs> in Lord of the Rings, where it was kind of like huts. So it's huts stacked on top of each other. And then like everyone was like walking on like dirt and like all that stuff. So nothing was like developed at all. Like dirt trails and stuff. Yeah. So there's like a huge like difference in the two. And then the main city is like kind of the main city here, but except for dirty, like super dirty and all that stuff. But the, the countryside is very interesting to go around because you see all of these people on bikes walking up hills. And then all of a sudden you see this bmw x6 coming in and you're like where the hell did this guy get his money right and then some people are so poor and some people are so rich and you're like what's the no middle sh- class yeah, the wage gap over there it's it's very wide mm-hmm. yeah it's so weird and then we got out of the car to walk around one of the one of the random cities or villages or something right and this is one of the more developed ones where they had a full dock and shipping and everything like that so we walked around we went into the supermarket which is kind of just the like a slaughterhouse, basically, it looks like, right? They have fish laying around, meat laying around. <laughs> and then you get a real feel of how people live their life, which is just like, you can see that they probably come here every single day, set up their venue, sell their stuff, whatever they can't sell, they bring it back home and then just rinse and repeat and do that all over again, right? And I got the same feel when I was with my relatives in China. What they do on a day-to-day basis is so different from what we do here, where we go to work, um, we hang out with our friends. We, you know, do random stuff like record podcasts, right? We have this like different lifestyle where we can do such a variety of different things and live in such a comfortable state still. But what they do is they wake up, they make breakfast, then they watch TV. And then... Oh, I was thinking of something completely different. I thought it was... They would have to do stuff that they really can't slack off or they're not going to survive. Oh, okay. Well, okay. T- to back it up, my, my family in China is... I thought they were going to be super poor, <laughs> They are actually like so pretty well off. You really want the BMW X6s? <laughs> no, no, we don't have the BMW <laughs> X6s, but we're actually like decently well off in China. Like I did not expect that to happen. So we were in, we were like more comfortable, right? I'm sure the other people who have to go out to the market to sell all their yeah. stuff, those people, I I would expect their lifestyle to be very different. But the lifestyle that we had were very like, I don't know. I, I felt like this like, they were doing nothing at all every single day. So we, we woke up at 6 a.m. every single day. That's how you guys got to Canada in the first place. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Maybe we've like smuggled money in and bought our way through, but uh, we woke up at 6 a.m. every single day. We ate breakfast at like 7. Um, yeah. Then we watched TV for a bit and then someone starts cooking at 10. We eat at 11 and then we sit and watch TV some more and then we eat at 5 and then we sleep at 7 or 8 and it's like would repeat over and over again. And I would imagine my cousin just that same schedule every single day and what what they eat is the same thing every single day right because they don't have a variety of food like we have here right? right they would go to the market whatever is fresh and new at the market they would grab that and then go home and prepare that well when you went to the market and stuff of like that mm-hmm. did you ever encounter these problems with like the fake eggs and rice and stuff no no no, no, no. not at the market itself but i'm sure my aunt has to deal with it because like one of the things they were talking about when we were sitting on eating dinner is that to boil your eggs there because fake egg is a huge thing there 
uh, fake milk is a huge thing there. So they, they actually don't have like milk milk. Yeah. They have powder and then mm-hmm. they mix it and make it into milk. I have one cousin that lives in Beijing. Mm-hmm. I, I believe that um, when he had his kid, I don't think he gave him milk because he doesn't trust the milk there. Yeah, because you don't know where it's yeah. come from. So when he visited for a month or two here with his kid, he had so much milk, <laughs> gained a lot of weight. That's when he good. went back, he lost all that weight. Uh, because yeah. the baby or your cousin the baby okay i was like your cousin got fat from drinking all of the milk too no, no, no. so i know people like uh in china when they do buy the milk they always buy like the imported canned milks mm-hmm. like the japanese brand of milk oh, yeah, well, uh, um this is like canned milk like different flavor okay. stuff. oh what the hell um even one of my exes when she went back to her uh her home city in xi'an she went to no frills we went to no frills first and she bought like the bags of powdered milk to bring back for her family and everything as well too i was like Fuck, that's like a lot of weight that you're packing into your yeah, luggage. but it's worth it for them there yeah. because they don't have that there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty crazy. How do you tell fake rice between real rice though? You eat it. You have to cook it. Shit. If it doesn't cook, then... It looks yeah. the same as it's, when you it's boil still it. Hard. It's still hard. Oh. Plastic rice is still hard. Yeah. Are you, or are you saying like when you're buying it, like how do you tell? What I'm sure rice? when you're buying it, it just looks like grains, right? They look like plastic little... Yeah, because so regular grains of rice look plastic to me. They probably like, even at a certain point, they probably can like fake it really, really well, right? It is China after all. Yeah, because even the everything. eggs, like even if you try to scramble them, you can't tell because they cook it. Like it cooks a certain way, right? So you have to boil it. To like, tell. That's so fucking That's good. So crazy. I know there's this the science that goes into it. Yeah, the science yeah. is crazy. Just to make a few cents. Because like eggs are so freaking complicated. They they start out liquid and everything, you know? and then you can cook them in so many different they ways. They really cared about making those fake eggs. Like, right? It was very important to them that they did that. I think I read uh, an article too. It was like people were able to reverse the process of the egg being cooked. And turn it back into like the raw form. I th- what? I think I have saw that same video, but I always thought like once something gets denatured, it shouldn't be able to get go back. Yeah, that's whack, isn't it? Right. So do you enjoy your trip, Billy? It was okay. It was very um. It was very interesting to see how life is very different there. Yeah. Right. Especially like because I was born there, and I can compare my life to my cousin's life. Yeah. And if I was living there, I would a hundred percent have a kid right now, have a wife by now. Yeah. Uh, I would probably I don't even know what I would I don't even know what my cousin does for a living like he just like cooks he watches TV. and eat and watches TV <laughs> yeah when I, I don't when know, I went back I actually didn't know what my cousins did either yeah what did they do like I don't even, I don't even know what like we were talking about like purpose and stuff earlier right what is my purpose there like I don't know what I would do to, I feel like I would go insane to reproduce that's a purpose there yeah well I, that's true because they have uh, my cousin is a year older than me yeah he has two kids already yeah another cousin is like I think three years older than me and she has three kids so th- did your mom nag at you uh, when when you were returning back to Canada? I don't know. Yeah, you can like you can like look at her and like tell that she's judging like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Wayne? Have you ever been back? Well, I've been to Beijing. Mm-hmm. I I, I wouldn't want to go back to Beijing. Is that where anymore. you're from, though? No, no, no. I have a question. I'll tell you about that one now. Because I went to Beijing as well too. Yeah. When I stepped off the plane and I was in the plane terminal, it was hot. The little walkway to the airport. As soon as I stepped into that little walkway off the plane, yeah. I immediately felt this like weird atmosphere and I was like, it's called hair pollution. Yeah, I was going to say, it's called smog. <laughs> yeah, like uh, instantly, as soon as I stepped off the plane, I was like, I don't like this place. Is it the pressure? You felt the pressure of the smog? Like, <laughs> Maybe. It just felt really negative. Did yeah. you experience the fog building when you were there? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, um, Fujian province is developing like crazy right now. There are so many condos being built and there is like uh, skyscrapers going everywhere. So, there's so many factories when we drove by, like there's like a valley, right? This valley is just a factory manufacturing crap. And there's a city that's just cargo and things being shipped around. And you see these huge like smokestacks coming out and just, just like, making so much crap coming out. <laughs> and there's mountains everywhere and they're they're white because like because you because of all the smog and pollution yeah. there. And this is in the rural area. Yeah. Like because I when I went to Beijing, that was happening too. Because mm-hmm. when uh where my cousin was living, it was in a condo really high up somewhere. Mm-hmm. You can't really, you don't really have a view because you can't see shit. Yeah, it's it's so bad there. Like it's like the CN Tower on a really cloudy day almost. Worse, I yeah. would say worse. You think it's worse? Yeah. Like, yeah I mean, like worse. an average day in China versus oh, on average day, a day here. Worse, so yeah. yeah, like right. When I was in Beijing, there was a day that was so smoggy that you couldn't even see the sun. Yeah, like the yeah. worst there is probably way worse than the worst here. But I'm yeah. saying on an average, it's like the CN oh, Tower okay. when it's very like cloudy. Oh, yeah, sure. On an average day. Yeah, yeah. on an average on day versus day. Day. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, as I was saying before, I I don't think I would want to go back to Beijing mm-hmm. because you know I went when I was 22 and I went again when I was um 30. You really love Beijing, don't you? No, I don't. No, but the thing is, okay, back then it was it still have like a very China feel, like street food or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Now it's not so much. Maybe it's because this time when I went the last time, I was like in the center of Beijing, like where the embassies are, all like right. the big malls and everything, right? So you know what? It felt like I I was still in Canada, just with a lot more Chinese people, right? So it felt like Toronto Chinatown. 
Oh, that's yeah. So that's kind of like so how modernized. It is when you, yeah, when you travel to like big, big cities like Montreal's the same. Yeah, anywhere in Australia, Sydney, Melbourne's the same. It's kind of like that same feel. Yeah. So it's like, what's the point of being here, right? Because mm-hmm. you're not really experiencing anything different. But uh, when I went back to um, well, not went back, but when I went to visit my uh, parents' uh, like hometown, right, which is at uh, Beihai, mm-hmm. that was how far is that from uh, Beijing? So it's around six hours by f- uh, flying. Six hours by flying? Yeah. Holy shit, you guys are far. Because it's uh, in Guangxi. Guangxi. Can you, can you say that again? <laughs> Canton South, pretty much. Yeah. Direct translation, right? But it's pretty much, I think it's sh- sharing the same body of water as Vietnam. Okay. That's how far yeah. it is. Right? So, like... Yeah, it's uh, really far south then. When my grandpa was uh, still around and lived back there, they were all fishermen and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, I have family there that's on my mom's side and my uh, dad's side, right? Mom's side, just uh, like the very typical, like, Chinese people you would... uh describe in Fujian, right? Like, not too rich. They're just getting by, mm. right? Like, small home that they're sharing with several individuals. On my dad's side, though, they're the ones driving the BMW X6. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good life. Right? Because, <laughs> like, they're the one when I had... To, I, like, I stayed with them during my time there, which was just a few days because I can't stay there for too long. Their stairs were made of marble. Oh, man. Jeez. Their main floor was well over 10, I don't know, maybe 20 feet. Because, like, the, just the main living area extends to the top of the house. And their house is three floors. But you know what? If you want um Okay, when you're rich and to be to look rich, it's very expensive. Mm-hmm. You got to buy all the stuff. Like You got to buy yeah. the car. You got to buy the house. Do you know how much car there, car costs over there? Yeah, I think it's like double the price almost because yeah. of the import tax. Yeah. It's only because if they want the model that was not made in China. Yeah. There, there, there's so many knockoffs of like... No, it's not that it's a knockoff. They still make it there, but they like prize the ones that are made from like overseas. Right, because yeah. like if they it's have status, Audi there, it's a status symbol. Yeah, if they have an Audi there, it'll still be an Audi, but it has a certain label on it that kind of represents that it's not made in China. Mm-hmm. Then there's the ones that are made in like fucking, I guess, where's the Audi from Germany? Yeah, yeah, and then those for Q5, my aunt described, told me it was around five hundred thousand RMB, so that's around like just under a hundred thousand a hair, and and base price for that car here is about fifty thousand. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? Yeah, so double the price almost. Yeah, but you know what? I don't know why you didn't experience it. Maybe uh, your cousins didn't uh, enjoy that lifestyle. But w- when I was there, my other cousins did take me to like there were nightclubs there. I'm in a part, different part really of, hard. Yeah, I'm in a different part of China though. Like my part is very, even though like we we're in the city ish, it's still kind of ghetto. Yeah, no, mine was ghetto. Yeah, it was like really ghetto, like a like village, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of poor people and whatnot. They still had a nightclub. Yeah, and it's like, but what, did your cousin have kids though? Because uh, my cousin had kids. I have so a few cousins why. that had kids. Okay. I mean, that's no, yeah, she have kids, but she's also divorced. But yeah. She sounds like a fun cousin. <laughs> yeah. Divorced. They drink, they drink so goddamn much. Yeah, because they're bored there, man. I think there's um, nothing to do. The one I went went to some sort of, I guess they call it disco. I think we ordered what? Uh, tw- I think two dozen beers, finished it in a short period of time. That was between me, my wife, and three other cousins. <laughs> Same time? Friend. Huh? No, this is Budweiser. They love Budweiser. Oh, oh man, a St. Tau beer. I was like, oh, should you I know? drink this? <laughs> and <laughs> then <laughs> after that, we went to a karaoke and like dust off another one or two dozen beers. Wow. That's a lot you of know what you The gain. service there is so good. Yes. Mm-hmm. Service yeah, you know what? is really good. You just put a beer and then there'll be uh, like workers, like service workers, like standing in the club. <laughs> Is it, is it one of those club. clubs where um, they line up a girl, like a bunch of girls, and you're like, no, what's man. up, you want? <laughs> no, no, no. this is just basically a club, like dancing, and then we yeah, had a table, okay. right? But then they'll have like service workers standing in between all the tables, like ready to clean your table, like once it gets even just a little bit dirty. Oh, yeah. And like when they see your cup empty, they'll pour more beer in it. Oh, yeah. That's the that's, best. That's a life, right? Yeah. That's because their service there is so cheap and yeah. so affordable. But like if you don't have a car, traveling there is pretty dangerous. Because the other option, if you don't have a car, is you drive a. Uh, I think it's a scooter? moped. Yeah, scooter. And that's just pretty dangerous. Yeah, there's a lot of people there with scooters. Scooters there cost around $1,000. 700 to $1,000 for the scooters there. It's cheaper here. Though. I mean, it's cheaper than here, though. Yeah. I know that. But yeah. When you were there, did people? Did you find that people looked at you and they could tell that you're a foreigner? Yeah, for sure they know. Like, for me, like, for sure they knew because we dress differently than everyone else there. Like, immediately right. they can tell. You did? I yeah. mean, no, I made myself dress like a Chinaman. You did? Oh. Yeah, like, oh, for Adidas I heard that or some people... Some people do dress intentionally like them, yeah, so that they don't get robbed and stuff like that or pickpocketed. You want to blend in? Mm-hmm. Oh no, where you go? Th- those are just my clothes. <laughs> Did you feel like it was safe in China though? I felt pretty safe there. Well, I felt really safe because I was always with my family. Yeah. And it's when different I, because yeah. he's huge, right? Like yeah. me, me and Wayne. Nobody's gonna th- like they're gonna think twice about trying to jack us. They'd be mm-hmm. like, "This guy's three times bigger than us." The, the amount of effort we had to put in to rob this guy is not worth it. That's mm-hmm. true. <laughs> and when I was in Beijing, I had a driver. 
<laughs> Damn, that's pretty yeah, good. So I, I didn't have that problem where I'll be in a random place where I could get jump button because I always had a driver there because mm-hmm. my cousin had one for me so I could go in where I want. I was with one of my buddies who was like a singer in China and uh, I think people thought I was his bodyguard. It was pretty interesting. <laughs> All right, so in the future news... <laughs> science minute news! <laughs> Science and tech talk. Okay, human hibernation, right? So there's a video that I watched recently. I'll leave in the link below from Science Channel that's sponsored by uh, PBS. Basically, there's two ways that they were investigating into human hibernation. So one way that they found how to uh, have human hibernation... Human hibernation, let's go over kind of what that is because everyone has a little bit of a different perspective. So f- human hibernation is not like a bear sleeping, right? They have to go into some kind of metabolic slowdowns it's uh, like captain america yeah and like when i, I was telling billy off air before bear technically they, they, they're not true hibernators because <laughs> they do wake up in like during uh like winter to scavenge for more food yeah because just because they plug their butt at the beginning of winter doesn't mean they gotta <laughs> stop eating how do you know they plug their butts to stop uh poop from coming up oh man that's gross they eat dirt to plug their ass no, they're not going to pull up the ass. <laughs> I think they're eating the dirt to plug it. I think you know too much about bears pulling I their butt. I think I might be wrong, though. It's okay. Okay, fine. Whatever. Um, yeah, but basically, it's some some way of slowing down your system, either from freezing yourself, which is, I think, the most traditional way people see it. Walt Disney. Yeah. They found that the lemur actually has a very interesting way of actually hibernating. So the lemur actually can drop its body temperature down to like zero degrees Celsius. Right. Um, so how they do that is kind of by manipulating their own genes. So they have some magical way of changing it, right? So by changing the way their genes work, they actually slow down the rate that they burn carbs and increase the way they burn the fat, right? How is this even physically possible? Yeah. I don't, like, I don't know. How do you, humans do that? I would love to do that. How do you manipulate that. your DNA? So, so what, they, what they're thinking is if we can somehow like use uh, some kind of technology to do that, we can actually cryogenically modify our body to do that as well. And hopefully last longer. And someone's going to turn this into a business to lose weight. Oh, they could. Actually, yeah, they right? probably could. If they can trigger this and control it in this specific way, you can burn your fat like crazy. Because, you know what? There's something similar to that right now for burning uh, weight. They, they freeze. They yeah, freeze. Yeah, the, the cryo-freezing, yeah. Wonder, is, that, is that similar to this? What does cryo-freezing do? It, it freezes still, yeah, so, freeze so, your fat. So professional, um, yeah, professional athletes uh, and some yeah. like huge like fitness people. Or I know some what cryo-freezing yeah. is, but like I didn't know it burns your fat. Yeah. Because it's advertised uh, near here now. Shit. I think it just like, I don't know exactly what it does, but I, what, like, my guess at just looking at what it, how it works is it just like shocks your system and increases your metabolism and tells it no, to no, get no. to work it's, right away. Uh, it, go, it targets specific spots. So I'm guessing when fat hits a certain temperature, mm-hmm. like, like a low temperature, it's supposed to disintegrate. That's what I'm assuming. Yeah, but it has to go somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. Like your uh-huh. body has to do something to it. So that's why I'm thinking the freezing and the and the turning it on again is basically hyper start your, your system to mm-hmm. work extra fast yeah. at that concentrated area, right? Because it's in like such shock, right? So it oh. basically shocks your body to work faster. I need to do this. It's a very cheap way to lose weight. I guess this kind of makes sense. It's like kind of when you're, um, when you have a bruise or whatnot, you put out, you ice it because it brings more what, blood cells to that one spot to heal. Maybe similar, but whatever. Oh, that just decreases inflammation. Really? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a doctor either. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. That's just fucking mind blowing that you can like manipulate your DNA to do that. Should I Google it and no, I just like by pure wrong. willpower? Yeah, it's like I'm I'm gonna stay asleep for six months and done. It's not even like it's like oh, evolution. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. So, um, so how it works, right? So I think Wayne was right about it. You basically freeze parts of your fat cells and it dies off, right? That's all. That's what it does. I wonder if I can just put ice on my stomach right now and get really skinny. No, but it goes like... What, no, you like, have to go really it's low. It's really yeah, cold, yeah. apparently. Yeah. Because uh, the first time I saw it was uh, from FusiTube. Because he, the guy did he I hate did that it. guy. You don't like him? No, I hate his eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that's a random thing to hate. What? I just don't like his attitude. He's such a douchebag. And he's fake. Yeah, he's a douchebag. He's all right. He's fake. Anyways, anyone interested in it, it costs $1,800. Oh, shit. That's expensive. So now you got to find a Chinese person that does it for half the price. <laughs> for 20 pounds. For 20 pounds? For 20 pounds of fat. Oh, I need to lose so much, though. You, also, because um, I know when FusiTube did it, he exercised like crazy, too. So you got to exercise, eat, and freeze your ass off. <laughs> so How many times do you have to do it to lose that 20 pounds? Is it just a one-time thing? No, it's no, like, no. Se- sessions. Yeah, you got to oh, do sessions. Yeah, you got to keep crazy. coming back. So I wonder if it's that much better than doing lipo then. Because lipo literally just sucks it out, right? Well, you don't have to cut your body, this one, right? You just freeze. You so. don't cut your body. 
Yeah, they 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 put the they just stick a needle and then turn yeah, it. Yeah, they they put the thingy in and then so you just have to do an incision, right? And chances of infection for that is a lot higher. Chances oh, okay. of this infecting your body is like you know, there's no way in hell. Crazy. Yeah. Anyways, so um, oh yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. So I think the uh, I think the way that Wayne said to basically lose fat actually might be a way to like kick this off and make it more profitable because you know how, like when you come out with new technology, it's always so expensive. Yeah. But if this can come out of the way to just like change your genes to start losing weight on its own and you just sit there for like an hour or something like while you're being monitored and then just go away like that would be amazing for people right at the same time that would be very costly because you'll have to start eating a lot more mm. right no well they just change it right they just trigger it but i can't be like they can also change your genes to suppress your hunger maybe if they no can i don't do want that, that they can probably do the opposite effect too for those people that want to gain weight but can't mm. and manipulate it that way because i always thought about this theory no uh, that has to past. do with metabolism though Oh, I think we're getting too far into human yeah. genetics, though. Because I, I was thinking of a system like if you can suck out the fat and give it to somebody else. <laughs> oh, that's gross. Would you want someone else's fat? That's no, like... I'm trying to get rid of mine. I know, oh, but, but I know people wants, that are trying to get bigger. Who wants your fat? Like, if you like, okay, it's like someone, like, I can't know. There's no way. I don't imagine, okay, in any way, like someone, like, you want to lose your, your stomach fat, right? And someone, like, wants a fat ass, right? Because, you know, that's like a surgery people want to do now, right? Sure. Yeah. So they take your your stomach fat and inject it into someone else's ass. <laughs> like, yeah. you think someone Yo, will want that? Nicki Minaj will buy that I think shit it depends up. on who's the person I'm getting the fat from. Oh, God. I don't who's know. Who's that man. hot girl? Why are you taking fat from anybody? You need to lose it. Whatever. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I don't know, man. Give it to Kim Kardashian. I don't think no matter what, I would take fat from anybody, from any any part of anybody. What if your life depended on it? <laughs> I don't know. It's, that's so <laughs> gross that, like, it was in your body, and it's like, have you ever seen, no, like, fat you know, on a Petri dish? Okay, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's going to be a process That's probably properly. why it looks gross. You're thinking it's a gross um, process, because the picture of fat is disgusting, right? Yeah. Because you've always seen in those gyms, they have that huge block. Yeah. And so you'd be like, <sighs> like a this is the fat in your body. You know what? If it looked like roses, you probably wouldn't mind it. No, it's just the idea that it's someone no, else's. No, but if it looked like roses, it's like, oh, I'll take his rose. So I guess, it, like, if you if it's done enough, it will be like That's blood like transfusion. Social norm? Yeah, it will be like blood transfusion, kind of, right? Yeah. Do you hate taking blood from other people, Billy? I never taken blood from anyone. Well, so when you know. need it, you're not gonna bitch about it. <laughs> well, I'll be unconscious. I'll probably be like, oh, what's happening to me? Okay. Um. So there's another way to actually get into the hibernation state. Uh. So they tested this on uh lab rats. So they. They used a hydrogen sulfide gas uh, exposed to rats with that, and then they were actually able to like live in a low oxygen environment, right? So that basically means their body is using less resources to do whatever the actions they need to do. But hydrogen sulfide gas is the fart smelling gas. So, Billy, <laughs> is that so if we put you in a room and start farting in it, <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, it's not the same shit, but you know, it smells like fart so and eggs. I, I have a question. What is the purpose of doing this? Is it to allow you to survive? But survive longer, or is it like you're just? I think I think it would be just like slow down your system, like so no, you no, can no, transport like, like far away. Yeah, you can transport yourself. Oh, like, like if, if you're going to Mars. Yeah. Oh, like, if you're no going, one's going to Mars. If you're going to like like very very far away, you need to do this. Or if you're very very sick. So when you're being hibernated, you're literally like immobile. Yeah, your body basically slows down. The only thing is, I don't know how it would affect your aging. Right, I don't it's think just, it would age you. It would, I'm not sure if though. If anything, it would be like Wolverine, slow it down. Well, yeah. isn't it like yeah, your body, down. your cells can only split like or duplicate so many times? Yeah, so I don't, so, I don't know how. Age maybe works. if it slows down so much that it just stops, then you won't age. Yeah, because the the amount of the, it, the what what it'll do is it'll basically um, slow down the powerhouses of your your body, right? So your nucleus and their whole like if you look, remember the biology thing? Right. Nope. Right there's that there's that uh, mitosis. Know, Whatever. Grade 11 <laughs> biology, if you remember it, right? So it'll basically reduce the amount of oxygen that's exposed to that, which will, you know, stop the production of energy as much, right? So long long story short, it'll do that, right? So aging, I think it will definitely slow it down. I don't know to what extent it will slow it down. But imagine if you're really sick and they figured a way to, like, stop you from, you know, your body from replicating its cells, right? So basically, let's say you're going to be in a coma for a while. Yeah. Okay, okay. Because it's, I don't know, I'm not, I, I'm not a biologist, so it's very hard to say what exactly will happen to you. Yeah. But I would imagine that it would slow down most of your, your system or at least drastically reduce the rate that things will grow. So if you have cancer, maybe you'll drastically reduce the rate that things will grow at and you'll have a better chance. Like you won't have a guaranteed chance of survival, but you'll have a better chance of survival because you're putting your body into a slower state. Aren't they doing like, um, it's not quite the same, but, uh, 
Do you know lobsters? How they have? Uh, they supposed to live forever. Yeah, they yeah, live yeah, forever because yeah, they, they regenerate. Yeah, they keep, they're keep like aging. looking into some way that they can also duplicate that as well too. Mm. Yeah, but that'd that would that would be, be kind of fucked up because like then people won't die, but they keep reproducing. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that would be and fucked up. If that's murder's got to be legal. <laughs> no, but you can still kill. Yeah, that's why you kill everyone. Oh my god! It's like too many people. You know, stab, stab. I wonder, like, so that lobster thing, like, uh, if they figure it out, right? Yeah. I wonder if you can set the age at which you want to stop aging. So if you're like 60 and then you like, can it was set it to infinite. You know so that, you stay right? 60 forever, basically. Yeah, or if you can set oh, to regenerate you yourself back down to like 30 or in your prime, right? Like Benjamin oh, Button? Fuck. Yeah, that would be fucking awesome. That would be really nice. What age would you want to be if you could set yourself? Oh, man. I think I would like to be 21 or 22. I think I was the best shape of my life at that time. So just in base of physical shape, because you're still gonna have to live a, a like yeah, a life. Because if you're, five, you're not 21, have adult problems, you're <laughs> fucked. Because I think your brain will be developed enough. Right, right, right. Your brain won't change, but your physical body, I would like, I would say 21, somewhere from 21 to 23, I think is the best shape, definitely. Because no I one, think, no one wants to be 30, right? Yeah, I think 25 is decent. I don't know, man. 25 is when shit started going downhill. <laughs> Things are not good at 25. I don't know. I think I was in pretty good shape at 25, probably my best shape, but. Yeah, that would be crazy if you could like just pick like I want to be this. You still have to maintain. No, no, you don't have to maintain it because you regenerate. You're like Deadpool. No, no, no. You'll look like a scrawny looking dude. You'll still have to maintain if you want to look ripped, right? I think the the logistics of how this will work will be very complicated. <laughs> like, because if you keep regenerating, how do you work out? Like, you know, like how old was Captain America? He looked pretty good. That guy was injected with drugs, man. Like, yeah, but he he was injected with blood at the right timing. I think he was sixteen. I want to be sixteen. That guy is fucking... No, that guy is... That was drugs that got him there. You gotta get <laughs> injected with drugs. You gotta do Deadpool style. <laughs> oh, what if you could do it, but you have to look, ugly look as like fuck? an avocado? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like, Would it be worth it? Oh, God, no. No, I'd rather, I'd rather be dead. Because <laughs> even though, like, Deadpool, like, um, looked like that, he was still, like, like Ryan... Um, Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, Ryan Reynolds, right? So he still had Ryan Reynolds, like, figure and cheekbones and stuff like that, right? So if you put that on a regular person, that's not that's not that good. I guess so. Yeah. Okay. So, but hibernation though, if you could put yourself, stay whatever age you are currently are, um, hibernate and go 100 years in the future, and they gave you that option, would you do that just to stop your life right now? Go 100 years in the future. Imagine if you didn't have a kid coming, Wayne. Well, no. Okay. I think the only reason why anyone would want to do that is so that they can see the future. Yeah, that's definitely but then like that, that curiosity. Means what's that's happen. 100 years you're gonna miss out and you're not gonna experience it. Mm. Right, like under my situation right now, there's no reason because I'm still gonna live the exact same life unless something comes up, God forbid. Mm. Right, but aren't so, you curious like what's gonna happen? Like, unless I'm, like, you know, what? I'm curious what's gonna happen in one hour. To be honest, <laughs> so <laughs> it's like it makes no difference to me. I the guess. thing is, like when you wake up a hundred years from now, you're literally gonna have nothing. Yeah, you're, you're alone too. Yeah, well, right? that's why so you, you gotta expect right? unless yeah. you sign a contract saying. I, you must provide this amount of friends for me to have. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I, want, I want an entourage of 20 you following make, me you around. You make new friends when you're 100 years older, right? Like, And you're not the only one that's freezing yourself for 100 years, right? There's other people. Okay, what if the other person that f- froze himself was a dick? Whatever. <laughs> you're stuck you with them. Talk, don't talk to that person. Because there's going to be like, in the next year, there's going to be another person frozen for 100 years. Next year, another person, right? And they don't even have to choose 100. They can choose like 99. And if you're doing this for like a government project or something, how do you trust the government? Yeah. No, no. Have you guys seen the uh, passenger? No, I had, I have with, it. Um, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen that. Yeah, that with was pretty good. Yeah, with the thing where Chris Pratt just picked the hottest girl to unfreeze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be the best situation. But I think I read this article about how in the future people are going to be stronger and hotter and everything, anyways, because they're going to start fusing with technology and computers or something. Oh, right? I thought it was like because everyone's going to be fused, like all the races will be fused <laughs> to like a beige colored person. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And you're gonna have more, if you're lucky you have the like the best attribute From of every, every single, single one race, yeah. and not like the worst where you're like a lazy big, big dude or something I don't know I don't want <laughs> subscribe anyone up there so does anyone know if Walt Disney that, that shit is real yeah he is always, frozen is he frozen yeah he's actually frozen is he frozen in a way that it could potentially be brought back Wait, to life I, I don't we know we don't know that technology See, for right? all I know he they probably died and they're like yo let's freeze him let's see what happens yeah the thing is that he had enough money to just say freeze me to a temperature that like my cells don't die so he's not too cold but freeze me enough where i could potentially be brought back with something hopefully in the future but he basically he's gonna die anyways right yeah so if you have an infinite amount of money like him 
you might as well just do it. And you know what's, what probably happened? They probably freeze him just enough that he's still conscious. Now he's freezing his ass off for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> he's like looking at you like, like why? <laughs> <laughs> like, like if they do the lobster thing, if they figure out like how they do it, right? Um, or some kind of regenerative thing, they give that magic to him. Then he Wolverines his ass out of there. And there you go. <laughs> That would be crazy, dude. It's like that uh, a video I shared on uh, our Facebook page recently where I think what they were doing is like they're sending fish that are frozen from China all the way to Brazil and they Jamaica? take it out of these... Oh, Jamaica or something, yeah. They take it out of the freezer, the deep freezer, and they put it in the water and it's slowly thawed out and then it was swimming again. You know, it'd be awesome. Oh, I didn't know that that was to transport no. fish. I thought I was just like, oh, let's freeze this no. fish. That would be cool. Yeah, they're tra- transporting live fish. Damn. That would be awesome to replace air travel. You know how boring it is on the plane sometimes? <laughs> just <laughs> freeze myself is like, you know, and then so I'm like, I'm here. But could, right? could you imagine the process and the pain? Like even going out on a cold day and then your hands are like so cold and when you like try to thaw it out, it hurts so much. I don't think it, like, it doesn't necessarily have to freeze you, right? You can be... You can be like, like gas Jack's? chambered, <laughs> like you know, and then just like uh, like drop <laughs> down. But I I can imagine like the getting up process of it to be a terrible experience. Like, it'll probably feel like a really bad hangover. Yeah, every single time you get back up, I was feeling like your bowels will just empty when you get you thaw out. Yeah, your body will go into like hyper. Like I gotta like make up for all this lost <laughs> time. You gotta like do something right. So it, that would probably happen. You'll, you'll probably like vomit and get nauseated and everything like that. But you know what? It'll be worth it if I have to if I can skip like sixteen hours of like air travel to China. Can you imagine the amount of people that are gonna get trolled when they wake up and it's like they pretend like it's a different time frame? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But I think if they do come out that way, you don't have to worry about a sixteen hour flight. It'll be like a two hour flight to China. That's it. You think so? Yeah, because um, but that's still two hours. I know, but how the te- how it'll work is it'll shoot you really high up into the atmosphere and then supersonic you down. So it's like up, <laughs> down. That's how that's how it'll be. Ideally, you know, not like hovering slowly over a thing. You just go up and down. Yeah. That'd be intense. Yeah, that would make like traveling a lot easier. So I don't think you have to worry about that. So you guys wouldn't freeze yourself for 100 years. Well, let's, let's go like 50. Would so you your really? family. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. If it was just myself. Oh, man, that's really tough. But it's not like I have anything going on for me right now. <laughs> like if I like pissed <laughs> off like really bad people, then maybe. Why? Then the, you're like, just my... you're just there, ready no, to get shanked. Like freeze me, put me, hide me somewhere until they die, and then. Yeah, but off. they're like, oh wait, he'll probably freeze himself. <laughs> Let's freeze ourselves <laughs> Can you guys... and wait for him to come out. It's like it's me freezing in a running position, and they're frozen in another running position behind me. <laughs> Can you guys carry this podcast without me? <laughs> 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 no, we'll, we'll have your frozen body in front of that money. Yeah. Like 50 years later, it's going to be like a huge enterprise. And it's like, oh <laughs> shit, we did it, guys. It's like, fuck you, you didn't do shit. It's like, sorry that we sold it to Apple. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're now property of Apple. That would be awesome. I, I yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I'll free myself, though. Uh, Would you ever consider being a cyborg? Yeah, I'll definitely be a cyborg, man. For sure, be a cyborg. Like, to, to what extent? Yeah, to what extent? Like just a limb or like, your like full body or just, and just your penis your brain or something. Is... <laughs> what the fuck my penis? That's like the, the last part I want to be a cyborg. Like if your major organs were still your major organs? No, actually I would love my organs to be replaced and everything else to stay the same. That so would be actually really amazing. Huh? So you can actually live forever that way. Well, I don't I don't mind dying, but I just don't want the the pain of having a heart attack or anything. Uh, I would like to say I'm going to just like turn this no, off. No, you can still have a heart attack. It's like if it, there's some mechanical failure. Yeah, but you can your body can probably just do something, you know, just like go into a hibernating state and just like you're and just someone comes pick you up, you know, and changes out your heart, right? Just plug and play, man. Come I don't on. think that's how it worked, Billy. But your brain would have to be the only thing that's like legit then. No, I would love my brain to be replaced too, what man. The- imagine if you can like okay, so imagine if your brain had like electrical components and then for memory's sake you just plug a hard drive in. Like a USB almost. Yeah, you just plug a hard drive. Or not even a hard drive. You know what? It'll probably be cloud based. So you probably sync your. Well, your yeah, it's going to get hacked and you know, really leaked out to everyone to see. For memory purposes, I can see that. But then, what if what it comes down to is like your own conscious, right? Have you guys seen your Black soul. Mirror? There's an episode of that like that. Have you seen it? No. no. So pretty much, there's something in that one episode is called a memory bead. So it's like implanted in your head, and then you can literally just have a remote and go through your entire memory. I think that might make you go insane, though, if you're oh, able you, to oh. see all that. Like, that'll, like... You guys need to watch Black Mirror. It's, it, that shit's intense. Yeah. But, like, would you still be the same person, you know? You know that debate of consciousness and who yeah. you are and all that stuff? Fuck that shit. <laughs> 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 Fuck that shit. Who cares? Like, I guess, like, 
at a certain point, like it'd be from, like Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, like from you now to you, like ten minutes from now, who's to say which version of you is real? Yeah, exactly. Like, who cares? Like, honestly, asking these questions, like, who the hell cares? Like, these people have too much time. If they're asking these questions, they got way too much time. They need to go to the villages and have babies. That's what they gotta do. So, so you would want like cyborg organs? Yeah. Would you want like superpower cyborg abilities? Oh yeah. Man. Or Someone's just the cyborg you for, organs? If you want superpowers, there's no one that's gonna say no. What you gonna get? Uh, I don't know. Like extendable arms or something? I don't know where the remote is. Maybe. <laughs> you have a remote tracker <laughs> in your hand. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta remember, other people are gonna have cool shit too, right? Some people are gonna have, like, imagine if people have cyborg legs and they're playing basketball or soccer. Yeah. This is fucking ridiculous. Imagine sports like that. It'll be crazy. They, they can play Quidditch. They have, like, actual, like. Like jetpacks on yeah, their legs? Yeah, jetpacks and then actually, like, fly around and shit. That'd be intense. And have, like, in, insane reflexes. You I'll just be, can't weaponize it. Yeah, you can't, well, yeah, yeah, you can't weaponize it. I was about to say, I wanna be the one above all. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna be a, just, you're basically gonna be a you full robot. You have to be an engineer. You're gonna be oh, a full robot. The one f- Wait, is that the right name? Stan Lee's character, kind of. Which one? In Marvel, the most powerful mutant. The one above all. Apocalypse. No, the one above all is the most powerful. That's his name? Yeah. What an asshole. What a fucking asshole name. It basically um, represents Stan Lee and whoever else created Marvel. Really? I did not know. That's me. I did not know that. I I think that's his name. All right, guys. So we got way sidetracked, but uh, thanks for tuning in this week. And uh, if you liked what we talked about this week, let us know. Hit the like button. Uh, If there's other stuff you want to hear us talk about, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for tuning in. See ya. Peace.